Welcome back to Guru Talk with Carl Lenore, and I'm your host, Dave Palumbo, today, and we're going to be talking about a very esoteric peptide, LL37. Uh, Carl, welcome back to the show. Uh, you've had some experience with this peptide. I really don't know that much about it, and so uh, we got you here today to, uh, to enlighten us. It's, it's a really interesting peptide, Dave. Um, I, I've had some gut issues uh, spanning about the past three and a half, four years. They got really bad. I ended up with distended gut. Anytime I ate certain foods like bread, pasta, any starches, potatoes, or especially anything with uh, high levels of soluble fiber, mm -hmm. uh, I just got bloated and gassy, and it was just terrible uh, and, and uncomfortable. And, and I... I told you off the air, I felt like the Jiffy Pop popcorn <laughs> tin, you know, and, and if you're suffering from this, you, you, you know what I'm talking about. So I did a show not too long ago about SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth with a, a scientist named uh, a, a Dr. Sadith Rao. And, uh, and they used a very expensive antibiotic uh, to cure this condition. I didn't want to do antibiotics. Uh, but I had all the symptoms of SIBO. I had the brain fog in the morning, the stiffness in my muscles. Uh, it actually causes uh, an overproduction of D-lactic acid, which is uh, specifically produced in the gut, but it has the same effect on muscle soreness and fatigue mm. as doing a hard workout. Um, right. Now, it's important. I, it's, I just want to stress something. Most of the probiotic bacteria we talk about populate the, the large intestine. There are small intestinal probiotic or good bacteria, but a lot of times people get overgrowths of the, of the bad bacteria in there, and um, or bacteria that do you know bad things to the to the small intestine. Just like H. pylori can affect the stomach negatively, causing stomach ulceration. You know, uh, one of the things that uh, Dr. Rao pointed out during my show was there is a direct correlation between uh, the overuse of uh, non-specific probiotics and the consumption of prebiotic fiber and the development of small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. People are actually planting these microbes in their guts. Uh, and when I talk about the guts, I'm talking about the small intestine, which is actually the longest intestine. It's, you know, ineptly uh, named. But there is a linkage. You know, the, the, the jury is still out. I, I'm with you. I know that you like things like kimchi and sauerkraut yeah. uh, and those types of things. I think it's much more sensible to get your uh, microbial, uh, your good microbes from those foods that actually make it down into the colon and mm. ferment and leave the microbes behind than a capsule that opens up in the gut and, and start to plant its seeds right in the small intestine. Yeah. I, I think what happens, I think, like you said, I think people overdo everything. And once again, it's all about balance, you know, because it's interesting. Fiber, soluble fiber, feeds the gut bacteria, which is good for the gut bacteria in the colon. It's not good when you have the wrong bacteria in your small intestine or your stomach because then you're feeding, you're feeding the bad stuff too. So, um, you know, I think what people need to do is have balance. I don't, I don't necessarily think you necessarily have to be taking a, pro, uh, a probiotic, tons and tons of probiotics every single day. Obviously, if you have a, an issue, like a, like a colitis issue where you have a a total exhaustion of, of the probiotic or good bacteria that colonize your large intestine, it's a different story. But for a person who has no symptoms or anything like that, probably once or twice a week is probably adequate to take in some foods that have some probiotics in them. Um, I don't use, I use a product everyone knows called Bubby Sauerkraut. It's a fermented sauerkraut. And I, I don't use it every day, but I'll, you know, a couple times a week I throw it into my, into my mix just to kind of add some, some good stuff to make sure everything is working properly. The only time I ever really have gut issues is when I take antibiotics. You know, sometimes the doctor will put you on antibiotics and that kind of white can wipe out your large intestinal bacteria because it's indiscriminate in what it kills. Now, you had an overgrowth, at least you discovered that you had an overgrowth of, of bacteria in your small intestine. What, what were your symptoms from that? Okay, so uh, brain fog in the morning. I would wake up and, it, and coffee, caffeine, nothing worked. I, I, it literally took me uh, probably about an hour to not feel this, uh, almost like I had cotton in my brain. I couldn't okay. function properly. Uh, I would have soreness in my muscles. Mm -hmm. like, I, like I had just run a marathon. I mean, like I, I would wake up in the middle of the night and I could feel the uh, the, the fatigue in my, my legs when I would right. roll over. I couldn't figure out what it was. And you know, um, for me, the distended stomach, the bloating and the belching, uh, 
Mm-hmm. All the all the gas I was producing from fermentation was happening north of the colon. So it was right. all I was belching all the time. And I gave it to myself, Dave. Mm-hmm. I gave this to myself. So I I did a show about four years ago about a a a, a probiotic made by Sigma Tau called VSL number three. Okay. And you can buy it over the counter or it's prescribed. And the difference between the over the counter and the prescription mm. is the over the counter is 450 billion with the B. That's a lot. CFUs per. Yeah, but the prescription is 900. Oh so I God. thought, I'll just take two a day. And I'm taking two <laughs> a day. Because, you know, I, I, everything, I overdo everything. Yeah, I'm taking two right. a day and I'm eating lots of Quest bars. <laughs> and I created the perfect storm. <laughs> I literally, like, was a farmer. I planted these yeah. things in my small intestine. And then you fed them with the Quest bars. Yeah. I thought, and, and, and I had to give up Quest bars. I couldn't eat a Quest bar for the past two years because if I ate even half, I'd say to Elisa, oh, I wish I didn't do that. I can feel my stomach blowing up already. Right. So I started doing some research, right? Yeah. I started looking at sun exposure mm-hmm. and small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. There's actually a linkage that there's fewer cases of SIBO in more, in more sunny climates where people spend more time in the sun. Mm-hmm. So I looked at vitamin D. And as I'm looking at vitamin D, a buddy of mine calls me and said, have you heard about this peptide LL37? I said, no, let me look at it. And I find out that LL37 is actually upregulated through 25-hydroxy, but not to the degrees that you can use injectable LL37. So I start looking so at the uh, research. Let, 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 me just say, let me just say something. So you're, you're talking about the, um, the 25-hydroxy, the, the, the vitamin D3, um, uh, I guess you could say, vitamin can upregulate LL37 in your gut. Endogenous. Right, endogenous, endogenous LL37. But it's, not, it's not raising it to ridiculously high levels, but now it's a, you can obviously take the actual LL37 peptide. It's available now. So what, yeah, continue with the story. And, and, and in fact, if you take the LL37 with vitamin D, it will triple the effectiveness. I've figured okay. this out from several people who All have right. used it who have followed this advice. What does it do? So, well, let, let, let me tell you what LL37 right. is first, okay? LL37 falls into a category uh, of peptides uh, that is called a cathelicidin. And this is uh, the only human antibiotic, uh, antimicrobial, antifungal peptide. And we produce it naturally. Uh, and, and, and whether we produce less and less as time goes on or the bombardment that we have today in our environment, just it's not able to control. It actually is designed to go after the bad actors, the bad microbes, and the bad fungi in our body and destroy them. Wow. Uh, you have a question? No, I said that's very interesting. Uh, what about yes. you think it can get rid of toenail fungus? Because nothing yes. gets rid of that. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. This is, ex- this is, Im- and I, for- I forgot to tell you about this too, but I'll get into it. All right. As you, you just saw a picture of my foot. Yeah. When I went for the surgery. I thought doctor- I had bad feet. You, you have yeah. to- <laughs> the, 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 the doctor said to me, you know, you have toenail fungus in these three toes here. Uh, after the surgery, I'm probably going to want to prescribe something for you. He wanted to give me like a generic Lamacil or something right. like that. The last time I went back, he said, man, your toenail fungus is gone. I didn't tell him anything that I was taking LL37. The LL37 got rid anything. of it? Really? Yes. Wow. And, and you know how you know? The new toenail grows out without the fungus, and right. the fungus just keeps moving further and further out. He, he said, oh, you, you, you did, he said, did I prescribe it for you already? I says, no. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. I like so, this. This is relevant to me because I get this toenail on this one nail. It's been driving me crazy for 10 years. Yes. You know? Yes. And so LL37... There's a lot of good research on LL37 within the uh, a- area of autoimmune disorders. People who have rheumatoid arthritis, uh, if they have uh, uh, ulcerative colitis, if they have, uh, uh, um, uh, what's the other one, the, the uh, psoriatic Bronze. arthritis. Bronze disease. Th- there's evidence that LL37 benefits them. Mm-hmm. And it can actually reverse the autoimmunity. One study was done by two scientists from the National Institutes of Health. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and, and the, if, you, if, you, if you go to PubMed and you put in LL-37 and just look what comes up. Now, LL-37 is also implicated in some unwanted things, but I, I, I want you to bear with me with my logic here. Mm-hmm. As you know, cancer cells leverage everything that is good for healthy cells, right? Right. 
Okay. And, and so there seems to be an accumulation of certain types of tumor cells of LL37. It, it's corollary. It, it, there's no evidence that's it's causative. But also, people who have rosacea, redness on the face, yeah. they, they tend to have a higher level of LL37 in their bloodstream. So again, I say it's corollary. I say the body is trying to get rid of the problem. Rosacea right. comes from your gut and your liver. Mm. And, and, and I believe the body is upregulating the production of LL37 in an effort to try to fix this problem. So, of course, it correlates. It's like sure, fire trucks no, yeah, well, and you, house. You, in other words, the LL37 is not causing the cancer and these other things. It's, it's just there yes. because it's trying to fight it. I got you. Because, because there are so many good studies that show that like people who are, are, uh, have uh, uh, kidney failure, mm -hmm. kidney problems, they tend to develop a lot of uh, uh, infections. And LL, the ones that had uh, an average of 3.7 times higher levels of LL37 survived longer than the ones that did not have a lot of circulating LL37, endogenous LL37 in their bodies. Very so the, 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 idea, the idea that it, it, it seems to get rid of bad actors, it fights, it's the body's antimicrobial antifungal. And so people say, well, why would this affect your gut, Carl? Because when we talk about autoimmunity, we talk about inflammation. Sure. Inflammation is the army of the immune system, and your immune system resides in your gut. True. So if, People if don't you know that. Pyres patches. I, every time I see somebody talk about uh, inflammation, I think gut. Yeah. They're thinking, they're thinking, oh, arthritis. If you, you know, even osteoarthritis is now being uh, implicated as an autoimmunity. It mm -hmm. used to be just rheumatoid arthritis. Now they're saying even osteoarthritis because we see people uh, who are uh, have messed up digestive systems and they're developing uh, arthritis in their fingers and their neck where there's no mechanical loading. There's right. nothing going on that's going to cause the meniscus to wear out. Yep. So whenever you hear inflammation, think of your gut. Your gut is your immune system and inflammation is the army that it sends out to fix things. So a lot of these people who have autoimmunities, if they get their gut straightened out, their autoimmunities go away. Yeah, so it's I agree. a very, very exciting peptide. Yeah, I agree. So you, you, you find this LL37, and, and what do you do? How do you, um, how do you use it? What, what, so, what kind of so doses are you using? The, the, the dosage is recommended by the International Peptide Society, which is a, an organization that's relatively new that has come together to help doctors. Boston Lloyd's not peptide. the president, is he? Who? Boston Lloyd is not the president of that no, organization. Okay, no, uh, actually, Dr. Dr. Bill Seeds <laughs> uh, is the chief scientific it's a officer. Real, it's the a real society, in other words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, real doctors. Okay. Because, you see, the FDA is now allowing pharmacies to buy uh, amino acid sequencers and produce peptides in-house. There's eight pharmacies in the United States right now that right. have been authorized by the FDA to produce everything, but you get a load of this, GHRP6 and GHRP2 are off the table. I have no I it's idea weird. why the F... Yeah, because they're the safest, they're the I most know, innocuous. I know, I know, It's funny because, you know what, I, I use, uh, uh, I recommend to our Rx uh, Muscle audience, the uh, TitanMedicalCenter.com, and they started prescribing, you know, peptides, IGF-1, and a lot of people didn't understand how that came about, but it's because they allow, like you said, the government is allowing the the uh, compounding of these certain peptides now, and it's making it available to these longevity clinics, and which is a great thing, because now the public could actually get real prescriptions for this stuff. Yeah, it's a little more expensive to go through yes. a compounding pharmacy, but it doesn't matter. You know it's real, and, it, and, it, and it's all tested out. It, yes, it's, it's, yes. it's a and tremendous no time where we, we're so lucky that these things are available to us. It's, right. it's unbelievable. This is a, as an aside, this is a very, very exciting time in medicine, because peptides are the first pharmaceuticals that are designed to fix problems instead yeah. of just cover them up. Yep. It's really an exciting time. I agree. And LL37 is already being prescribed to people who have gut issues, who have rheumatoid arthritis and mm. ulcerative colitis and other things. And you can find good doctors out there. In fact, uh, International Peptide Society has a list of doctors. I think they've certified 200 doctors in the United States today oh, wow. and more are joining on. So uh, what's the dosage you're taking today now? 100 micrograms a day for six weeks is the recommended dosage from IPS. I have used as much as 250 micrograms a day. Yeah. I, I, I saw I saw results within a week. It was it was uncanny. What were the uncanny. results you noticed that when you took this? I couldn't eat bread anymore. 
Right? When we go to an Italian restaurant, they put bread and yeah. olive oil. I couldn't even, if I ate one piece, if I ate a meal without bread, I was great. If I ate that same meal, but I had a couple pieces yeah. of bread, I was like bloated. So now I, most people would probably tell you, Carl, you're gluten. You're gluten. It's the gluten that's getting you. That's what they would tell you. No. No, glu- look, as an aside, tangentially, gluten yeah. causes inflammation in everybody. Some people are more sensitive than others. Gluten is not a good thing. But, you know, I'm Italian. I want to have a piece I don't, of bread. I don't, I don't agree while. with that. I think that there's some people that, are, that have gluten allergies, and those people cannot take in gluten. But I think there's also a lot of people think that they're gluten sensitive, and they cut it out of their diet, and they don't, they don't really need to. See, I'm belching. I'm going to get I'm some gonna, LL37 in me. I'm going to send you a, a link to a blog that shows, a very well-written blog, that shows that inflammation goes up with gluten, regardless of who you are, but your level of sensitivity uh, determines whether or not you notice it or not. But anyway, that, that's neither here nor there. So I went to, I had to go to Atlantic City for my cousin Rosemary's 75th uh, birthday party. Right. And Elisa and I went out to Carmine's, which is a really great I restaurant. Yeah. 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 And so, you know, they put the bread out. Now I was on the, I was on LL37 about a week and a half, two weeks at this point in time. Okay. And I started out with 250 micrograms a day for the first week. And then I shifted to 100 micrograms a day after that. And I thought, let me let me see, right? Sure. I had like a little piece of bread like this. And 15 minutes later, I would have been bloated already. Nothing. Really? So I ate another piece. I, I ended up eating a bunch of bread, not because I liked it, but I kept saying to Elisa, I can't believe this. I can't believe that I'm eating bread right. and I don't feel like the, the, the Pillsbury Doughboy right now. So that was the first indication. Mm-hmm. I continued on. I just wrapped up a six-week run of it. Right. And I, I, I can now eat Quest cookies, Quest bars, oatmeal again. Doesn't even bother me. And my stomach is noticeably flatter. The distension is gone, and my stomach right. is noticeably flatter. Wow. So, and the, the, uh, the brain fog is gone completely. Right. The, the uh, uh, lactic uh, acidosis in my legs is gone completely. Wow. And I had, I had redness in my chest. Right. Like the skin. It's, it's now it's restricted just to a little area like right here. And I believe the next six week dose I do, that's going to end up going away. And as I said earlier, I had a, a couple toenails that the doctor pointed out. He says, you know, this is toenail fungus. I'm going to give you a prescription after the surgery. The, the toenail fungus is on its way out. It's already been eradicated after six weeks on this. Stuff. Only six weeks is usually it takes a long time for those toenails to grow out. He, he told me I'd have to take Lamisil for a year in order for this to, to, to go. I know. Away. I didn't want to take it either because it's liver toxic. That's why I yes. didn't do it. Yes. Yes, 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 exactly. So, and you that's think why six, so you think six week cycles are prudent. Why wouldn't you just stay on this stuff indefinitely? Well, uh, because uh, I would, you know, <laughs> me, but you know how I end up. Yeah. But, but uh, the IPS says that you should use it for six weeks and take four to six weeks off. I'm taking two to three weeks off. Uh, but, you know, they're trying to be sensible about this stuff because there's, a, there's still a lot that's unknown about it. Uh, right. Because of the research that shows it's corollary to some things, they don't want to become reckless with it. So they say, right. you know, six weeks on, six weeks off. Right. But I, I'm just taking two weeks off, and I'm getting right back on it again. But I'm going to stay at the 100 micrograms a day a dosage. Now, let me tell you an interest, two, two interesting stories. So a guy listened to the first show I did on SuprimaRadio.net. I did a show with Dr. William Seeds where we talked about the science behind LL37. And he listened to that show, and he got it from his doctor, and he started taking it. And he has a very high security job. He came on my show anonymously, mm-hmm. and he said he was worried he was becoming an alcoholic. The past couple years, he needed a couple tumblers of bourbon every single day. <laughs> he, he doesn't drink. He stopped. He said the craving for alcohol just went away like somebody flipped the switch after the six weeks he was on it. Wow. He and he's lost 11 pounds and he's changed nothing about his diet other than getting the alcohol out. But I think mm. some of the weight loss was edema, fluid leaving the sure. the intestines and 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 so on. But you and I both know that that the microbes in the gut create craving by sending chemical signals to the brain. Sure. And so, in his case, maybe not everybody's case. His need for alcohol was being driven by some bad actors in his gut that once they were eradicated, he didn't even crave alcohol anymore. Well, these gut bacteria could ferment the alcohol too, right? I mean, that, I mean, it's like a, another 
food source for them. You know, not a good yes. food source, but it's a food source. Yes. So I now, mean, I think the gut bacteria actually can talk. I know it sounds weird, but I, I think they can actually talk to the brain, obviously via signal, chemical signals, like you said. And I think that the brain says, "Give us more," you know, and the gut bacteria says, "Give us more," and and, and they work together, you know, in tandem. No like doubt. That. No doubt. There's Probably, no which doubt also fuels that. addiction too. I'm sure it's a sem similar type of thing. Mm -hmm. Yes. I can't uh, imagine. I have a feeling a lot of people that would have the the what they would call themselves alcoholics or drug addicted behavior. I think a lot of it could be a, a, a bacterial overgrowth or undergrowth or whatever you want to yes, call it. Yes, absolutely. Imbalance, you know. And, and now the other story that's happening right now. In fact, I'm going to meet with a woman this evening. It's the third person in this area of interest about LL37. One of the things I said during the second show I did on LL37, when I had the guy on telling his story about how well it worked for him, yeah. how he didn't crave alcohol anymore, I said, you know, I did a show about seven or eight years ago with a doctor from the UK. She was an MD, and she had a child on the spectrum, autis autism spectrum. Right. And, and she wrote a book, and she told people that a particular uh, uh, probiotic, L. plantarum, right. Heard of it. When she gave it, when she gave it to her son, a lot of his symptoms subsided. He didn't get completely better, right. but he, but he was able to function better, and he was less unruly, and and a lot of his gut problems went away. And anybody who's listening to the show who knows a child that's on the spectrum, you know, they have terrible gut issues. They're gassy. Certain foods just destroy them. Their bowel movements are terrible. Uh, they and and they they all they crave sugars they crave starches mm. because they're feeding these bad bacteria these bad bacteria are sending signals to the brain we also know that these bad bacteria can be creating uh, neurotoxins that confuse and foul up the brain so when I did that show I said I have a funny feeling LL37 is going to provide benefit to some children who are on the spectrum where their symptoms are milder than than others where eradicating and correcting the gut may actually give them their, 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 their families their lives back. Mm. And three women have already started using it, and I've already gotten feedback from one of them, and she's videoing her child, and she's saying she sees changes. The child is making more eye contact. The outbursts are less and less. And so I'm very hopeful. And, you know, I, I don't want to be reckless here, Dave, because yeah. I, I can be reckless with me. But I can't be reckless with children. Sure. But I'm very, very hopeful that there might be a class of children on the spectrum where their doctors could monitor them and work with them and use LL37 to eradicate some of the problems that they have. In mm -hmm. fact, I'm meeting with a woman this evening who happens to live in Louisville, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm going to teach her. She's already gotten it. I'm going to just show her how to reconstitute it. She's never given her daughter a shot. I'm going to show her. Mm -hmm. But it's an insulin syringe, Dave. Yeah. Under the skin, pop. It's like... It's a 32 gauge uh, <laughs> syringe. It's it's like a metal eyelid. I know, but feeling. Carl, when you, when you were a kid, you saw a needle coming at you. You didn't care how big or small it was. You you ran for the hills, you know. Oh yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, it, it's a very interesting peptide, uh, it, and I predict that it's going to be very. And 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 the reason I wanted to do your show about it is because you and I talked about distended guts within the bodybuilding community. Yeah. I have a funny feeling that there's a there's a group of guys or gals out there who are bodybuilders. They have the gas. They have the brain fog in the morning. Yep. Uh, they have the muscle soreness that it doesn't make sense. It's not connected to the workout. That they might be able to benefit from doing a couple six week rounds of LL37. I, I agree with you, and you know I think the reason why is and and we don't do this as, on purpose as bodybuilders, but let's face it, when you're trying to put size on, Carl. And you're eating eight times a day, and you're pounding these shakes, and I mean, you, I mean, the overgrowth of everything has got to be horrendous inside the body. I can't even imagine what I was doing to my body. I was eating 12 times a day. I was getting up in the middle of the night. You know, I, my body never had a chance to detoxify itself. It was constantly being bombarded with with protein and high carbs and and fats because I just needed to to sustain my metabolism, and I wanted to put size on. So. You know, we didn't think back then. I didn't. I didn't even have this in my wheelhouse. Hey, detoxify, give the body a rest. It was just complete, never relentless bombardment. And look, I put muscle on, but I was very distended also until I started really learning about detoxification and fiber. I had a lot of distension issues. So 
I can't even imagine how many bodybuilders out there probably have that same problem. And I don't know if, if, if LL37 will cure all those problems. I think it's, it's got to be a, a whole you know, program that you have to institute with you know, taking a good fiber supplement like Fiberlyze, taking you know, your, your, an LL37 to get rid of overgrowth of, of the bad bacteria, taking a good probiotic. I think it's a combination of everything because if you do just one thing and say, oh, it didn't work, then I think you're, you're fooling yourself. You're being naive. And, and, and the other problem that we have today that you didn't have back in the day is the, 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 the quality of food today, the, the chemical uh, assault on food today. Yeah. Uh, what, you know, uh, 80% of, uh, of, uh, of herbicides are uh, weak antibiotics or strong antimicrobials. Now think mm. about this for a second, right? We don't want to take, we don't want to take uh, antibiotics because it messes up the gut. But meanwhile, if you're eating heavily sprayed crops, yeah. you, you are literally taking low dose antibiotics every single day. Wow. Think about what that does to the gut. Think about yeah. the linkage between that and things like ulcerative colitis. Right. Uh, you, you know, there's, there's, there's so much going on with the assault on our bodies, aside from just uh, just right. trying to fix it with something you, like LL37. You can't even eat healthy anymore. I think I'm, eat, I'm having salads, I'm eating that fresh vegetables, and meanwhile, I'm, I'm getting destroyed with, with the, all the stuff they're spraying on, the pesticides. I mean, when I go buy grapes, my son and I would go to the supermarket and buy grapes, you know, while we're in the supermarket, we'll eat some grapes, and I literally, the, the stuff that I can wipe off these grapes, the outside of them, you know, I won't let my son eat them with just right out of the thing. I gotta, like, I gotta wipe them on my shirt, and my shirt's got stains on it from, and this is just from the, from whatever they're spraying the grapes with so that the insects won't get it. It's unbelievable. It makes you not even want to eat the vegetables and fruits. I, I, I get, when I eat nowadays, I have a mild level of angst. Like, like <laughs> oh man, I wonder what I'm, I, I just did a glyphosate test recently. There's a company yeah. that'll do a urine glyphosate test and I'm in the lowest percentile oh, of good. Americans, but there was still some in me. And I, I, I buy organic, but you know when you go out to restaurants, you know what they're serving no, you. Wow, yeah. It's, you can't yeah. tell. But you know what, you can't live in fear either because you'll drive yourself nuts. I think the benefits of eating fruits and vegetables and high fiber foods far outweighs the risk of whatever they're spraying on these foods. So, you know, people will say, well, I'll just eat McDonald's because at least I don't have to worry about that. But I, I, don't, I don't think that that's, you know, going to solve the problem either. I think you got to just live, you know. It's, a, it's in the McDonald's too. They're using textured vegetable protein to augment their beef. Mm -hmm. And that's soy. And soy is one of the most heavily sprayed oh, crops really? today. Yeah. So you can't get away from it. it no. unless, unless you can grow your own food on a plot of land that you know has never uh, <laughs> been sprayed. And even then... If the farmer two miles away is spraying, the overspray comes and hits your land too. I know, you know, Carl, I'm growing, I, I have like a little ve a vegetable uh, garden, but um, meanwhile, every summer, because the insects here in Florida, I look up and the, the planes are coming over and they're dropping all kinds of stuff on, on you. And they're like, oh, don't, don't be outside during the hours of 4 a.m. and 5 a.m. We're going to be spraying. So, I mean, there's no, you can't escape it. They, they're getting you everywhere. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> but that, but I, I think people need to look into LL37. I really do. So you can go to your doctor if you have a cool doctor, and they can they can actually write you a prescription for this stuff. And they can where yeah. would you get it from? Where would you fill the prescription? So so uh, in my case, there's a pharmacy in Lexington, Kentucky called Taylor Made T A I L O R Made Compounding. Yeah. They make it there. Oh, and you can just go right to them, and they'll and they'll send it to you. No, um, my doctor writes a prescription. That's and what I mean. They fill it. But you have to send the prescription to them. I would assume. Yeah, yeah, I, I got a really good doctor, a very forward-leaning doctor, Dr. Matt Andre. Mm. Um, the guy is brilliant. He's 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 written, published articles. He's published books. I mean, the right. guy is brilliant. I'm I I drive two hours to see my doctor. Wow. Because well, you know, Dave, we drive two hours to go to IKEA and buy crap furniture. Right. But we won't drive two hours to go to a doctor that we trust. It's Are bizarre. you in Vegas, Carl, or no? What's that? I thought you're in Vegas now. No, I live in Louisville, Kentucky. Oh. I moved. I moved from Vegas a long time ago. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm back. I'm, I'm back in Louisville. Got you. Okay. All right, but you know what? Let, I, I think I'm going to talk to Titan Medical. I'm going to see if, if they can start uh, making that available because I think LL37 obviously has a lot of application to bodybuilders for longevity purposes for all kinds of health issues. I think it would be a great uh, uh, addendum to their uh, list of all the stuff that they make available. And like you said, there's there's seven. You know compounding pharmacies throughout the U.S., they should be able to find one of them, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to make that available to the, the bodybuilding world and for the people who want to try this stuff. 
I might give it a shot just to get rid of the toenail fungus on my uh, my one toe I have, you know. It's a ma- but take it with uh, so I take cuz I'm dark skinned. Yeah. I did a 23 and me. I'm actually 14% African. You are. That's, that explains a lot. Yeah, it does. So 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 uh, I I have a higher degree of of vitamin D binding protein. Mm-hmm. And I also produce less vitamin D in the sun than a fair skinned p- person because my ancestors they they're they're at a greater risk of overproduction of vitamin D sure. than underproduction. Right. So, uh, I have to take thirty thousand IU's of vitamin D to get my twenty five hydroxy levels into the seventy seventy four range. Yeah. Where where a fair skinned person who who maybe has Scandinavian they could take five thousand IU's and get that. Right. But what I'm recommending is that if you're you're gonna use if you're gonna use the the uh, LL three seven up your vitamin D dosage for the six weeks because here's why. We know that Ella, that vitamin D turns on mm-hmm. the, the genetic sequencing to produce this peptide. Right. And so that it doesn't just do that. It probably produces a lot of supporting things that aid the LL37's effectiveness. Right. And so when you take an exogenous dose of it, the vitamin D creates the scaffolding for it's for it to work, in my opinion, there's no research that shows this, yeah. but I believe because you know, Dave, we always want to take this complex thing and go, well, what's what's really doing? Oh, this one thing, let's just take this, and it doesn't work. So, I believe uh, that you should do two things if you're going to use LL37. Uh, st- start to eat the foods that caused you trouble, and I'll explain why in a second. Number two, support it with extra vitamin D. So that it has the scaffolding of, su- of, of, of supporting players to make it work the way it's supposed to work in your body. Now, you're going to say to me, Carl, why would you say eat the, eat the foods that are causing the problem? And here's the interesting thing. The study that they did with Dr. Sadich Rayo with that very expensive antibiotic, mm-hmm. there are about 30% that the antibiotic didn't work. So okay. what they discovered is this. Like, like a lot of people who go on the keto diet, they'll have these problems like we're talking about. And they go, I know, I'm just not going to eat starches. I'm just going to go keto. And, and their problems go away. Mm-hmm. But they didn't kill those microbes. Microbes, they become spores. Right. They develop a shell and they become dormant. They're in suspended animation. They're not dead. Gotcha. They're still alive. So what they found out was when they took that expensive antibiotic, if the people still ate the foods that caused them problems, the, the microbes ate the, the antibiotic too, and they died. Uh, the ones that were, res, that, that were restraining from eating the foods that caused them problems, they didn't have the same success. So my logic says, when you use the LL37, wake those spores back up so the LL37 can destroy them. Because if they're spored, they're in suspended animation. You're not getting rid of them. Inter- that, I like that. That's very interesting. And I think the logic behind it is very sound. In other words, you want the, these these bacteria to be active and, and awake, not not yes. asleep, where no one can find them. So now, when they're awake, now you hit them with the with the atom bomb, so to speak, and, and you blow That's them it. up. <laughs> That's it. Very That's it. good logic, Carl. I like it. I'm I'm going to try to give it a shot. I'm going to see if my just for my toenail purpose. I don't really have any uh, any intent. Not that I know of any intestinal uh, digestion issues, but maybe I do. Maybe I'll feel a lot better, and I won't even realize it. Um, so. Uh, now let, let me ask you this question: um, What is a what would you say it costs to do a six week cycle of this stuff? It depends on what you're. So so the interesting thing about Taylor Made is that they sell directly to your physician, and your physician fills the prescription. Right. Uh, it, I mean, it it could cost you a couple hundred dollars. Okay, that's not uh, terrible. No, 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 no. It's not horrible. It's not horrible. At and what all. do you think about this? I know there's some peptide sites out there. I know you don't endorse any, and I, I don't endorse any either. But are there any out there that you know, do you think that would be? Is it safe to buy from them? There's one. There's one, and it's out in California. And if you want me to say the name, I will. You but can if you want. I, what's that? You can say the name if you want. I don't care. There, there's a there's a company in California called PeptideSciences.com. Mm-hmm. And they, they actually have their own amino acid sequencers and they produce all their own peptides. And the way you can tell that is when you go to their website, you're going to see a list of peptides that you've never seen on any of the bro science peptide sites. Right. They have cosmetic peptides. They have uh, hair regrowth peptides. They have peptides that they're actually selling to laboratories 
that are doing research. They sell to universities. They have probably 150 peptides on their website, mm. and LL37 is one of them. I could not find LL37 on any other peptide website, and I happen to know there are a lot of doctors that won't admit it, but they buy their peptides from Peptide Sciences, <laughs> and, they, and they relabel them. Yeah, they gotcha. relabel them. All right. Well, that's good to know. Carl, you know, it's always a pleasure to get you on the, on the show and to get some valuable information out of you. I always, you know, you're always like on the cutting edge of what seems to be going on, and that keeps me sharp. And I know our viewers love to get this uh, little bit of information. You know, I, I had mentioned another peptide to you that kills fat cells off. We're going to try to talk about that next time. I know I'm, I, yes. I gave you an assignment to go look it up uh, yes. to see what, uh, what you could find out about it because people are obsessed with obviously weight loss and uh, these peptides seem to open up a whole new world of uh, possibilities. You know, we thought steroids were kind of a dead end because there's really no place to go with them. Uh, we knew about growth hormone and IGF and I thought, and pretty much most people thought that was it. You know, the GHRPs and the, and the growth hormone releasing peptides are kind of redundant with GH, but this whole new like world of peptides that do, do everything in the body just seems to, to almost, they're almost like on par, I would say with stem cells. like. Uh, it's a brave, a brave new world of, uh, of, I guess you could say, of uh, discovery. And it's going to take a lot of experimentation to really see what these things really do. But I, I find it exciting. The, the reason that peptides are working is because unlike pharmaceutical drugs, peptides are messages. They're cellular to cellular messages. They are they're amino acids in a specific syntax, in a sequence, that sends a message from one cell to the other, do this. Unlike pharmaceutical drugs that uh, try to uh, capitalize on systems that that suppress symptoms, right. peptides actually are messages, like messages in a bottle that go from one cell to the other and say, do this. And if you find a peptide that tells the cell to fix itself, you're actually eradicating the problem instead of masking it. Peptides are very exciting. And moving forward in medicine, is this is a very, very exciting time. It really, really is. Yeah. Well, thanks again for taking time. And, you know, for people who don't know, we had a little problem with the, with the show we taped the day before, so Carl was nice enough to come back. We did a second taping of the same show, and I think it came out a lot better. So thank you, Carl. Thank you, Dave. Thanks for having me. All right, me. And guys. That's going to take us to the end of another great episode of Guru Talk. If you guys have topic suggestions, put them in the comments below or email me directly. For now, I'm Dave Palumbo for Carl Lenore. We'll see you next time.